Okay. So, so senior year at Florida State University, he was the highest scoring kicker in the nation and was awarded the Lou Groza Award for the nation's best kicker. Gano later played for the Washington Redskins, where he currently holds the franchise record for the longest field goal made, 59 yards. I know, very impressive. Um, in 2012, he signed to the Carolina Panthers, and he's been starting kicker ever since. Woo! So, as an expert in working hard, Gano is going to help. Gano is going to help us to understand what it truly means to fuel greatness. So, please give a warm welcome to the awesome Carolina Panthers, Graham Gano. Okay, so stick with me, guys. Who in here believes in Bigfoot? Because I do. Thank you! Like, thank you. That's one of my favorite little weird creatures that I follow, and I watch all these documentaries, and like, I'm such a Bigfoot enthusiast, so I hope to go Bigfoot hunting or squashing one day. Um, but yeah, I think if I had a spirit animal, it'd be something like a Bigfoot. <laughs> I don't know how I'm gonna go after Bigfoot, but uh, I, I guess I'm gonna say bald eagle. I think they're really cool. Um, you know, the bird of our nation. Um, I, <laughs> thank you, thank you. I just think they're really cool. That's why I, I would say bald eagle. And um, I never see anything like attacking a bald eagle. I'll always see bald eagle attacking other stuff. So that'd be mine. things about me doing this big sport was the messages I received from people all across the country, uh, all across the world, not just from um, athletes who wanted to do bobsled. It was more so about people uh, going after their dreams, going after the things they want to do with themselves, going after goals. And I think that my journey and my unique story kind of inspired them. And so I thought that was pretty cool. So that's greatness to me. That was really good. I got, I got to start answering first, so I don't have to um, follow you. Um, so see, greatness to me, uh, I feel like, is using the talents and abilities you've been given um, to the best of your ability to really find out uh, what you have, what you excel in, and try to be the best at that. And not only that, but use your talents and abilities to make others great. And I feel like, uh, you know, everybody's put on this earth to make a positive impact in somebody else's lives. And, lives. and um, I've got three young boys. And so I try to try to make them great. I want them to be the the best they can be as well. Awesome. Okay. So next question is, what do you think of when you hear the term "fuel greatness"? Uh, what do I think of when I uh, think of fuel greatness? Um, well, like I said, I have three young boys, so I have to uh, make sure they, they are full of energy every single day. Um, so in, or, in order for them to be so rambunctious every day, I've got to make sure they're um, fueling their bodies in the morning, and I have to set a good example for them. So if I'm waking up and, and not eating breakfast or just eating junk, they're going to want to do the exact same thing that I'm doing. So um, every morning I make sure I wake up early, and even though I might not be the greatest cook or it might take me forever to, to make breakfast every morning, that's what my wife would say, um, you know, I still try to do that and, and make them um, eat something healthy in the morning and just fuel their bodies. And, and I think I do a pretty good job because they are always bouncing off the walls. <laughs> I completely 
agree. Um, nutrition is number one when it comes to fueling greatness. As much as I love some snacks and some junk food, I won't mention it here. Um, being healthy is number one. But I also think mental toughness and mental health is really big too. And you gotta build yourself up like as athletes, as people, we're our biggest critics. And so sometimes you end up tearing yourself down more than you build yourself up and then you expect greatness. So I think by putting that positivity into yourself and, and believing in yourself, believing that everything you do is gonna go towards your goal and you're gonna accomplish all your dreams if you keep pursuing it, I think that's big too and that's a way to feel greatness is believing in yourself and putting that positive energy back into yourself. All right, next is who has helped you feel greatness throughout your careers? <clears throat> Miss um, Mallory over there, that's my mom. Everybody please say hi to my mom. <laughs> she is um, my everything. I am 30, but uh, she still has such an influential, like she's been such an influential person in my career even to this day. Um, I would not be here without her obviously, but Outside of that, she has been such a big support system for me pursuing sports and me just getting through life. I mean, um, having her to look up to and having her to sh as a shoulder to cry on when I'm supposed to be strong and having her as a, um, a rock and a voice of reason has been the reason I've been able to be as successful as I have. So thank you, Ma. Um, let's see, I probably... I can't pick just one. I've been surrounded by so many great people throughout my career. Um, I've had a whole bunch of injuries through my career, which being a kicker, you wouldn't think that's the case. Um, but I've broken both ankles and I tore my knee in college. And the person that's been there through all of this is my wife. So um, I think through all of that, she, I, I probably wouldn't be where I'm at today without her, um, especially give me a little kick in the behind sometimes to get me going. Um, Cause I, sometimes I get a little bit lazy. And, uh, but yeah, she, she's always there to, to help me and push me, but I've always been surrounded by great teammates as well. And I feel like, uh, you know, if you surround yourself with great people, they'll help bring the best out in you. And um, I've been fortunate to have that throughout my career and been surrounded by great coaches, um, just all kinds of people in my life. And I'm uh, very thankful for that. I wouldn't be where I'm at today, but. Wait, I have a question for you guys. Who feels greatness for you? Like, who's an influential in your life? I, I want to take that one. Yeah. Um, I would have to say um, my parents, of course. Um, that's my biggest support system, my parents and my family. Um, they really encourage me in anything I do. They're always there for me and have my back. So they he definitely help me feel greatness. Yeah, I would have to say my parents too. They're definitely, you know, my number one support system. They're the ones who get me to and from practice. They help me in everything I do. So I really shout out to the parents. Shout out to the yeah, parents. Definitely. Definitely. Let's give a round of applause. To my coaches, you know, giving me that great advice throughout the years and helping me always push when things get hard. So how has your family helped to support you as a pro athlete? Um, no, I have other family members outside of my mom, <laughs> but I come from a very athletic family. Uh, my brother played in the NFL for eight years. Um, my uncle and my cousin both played major league football. My mom was a track athlete. My father was a swimmer. And so I come from a very athletic background. And I think having that type of support system was cool for me. It wasn't um, pressure. It wasn't stressful. It was a fun competition every time we linked up. But um, to have them supporting me throughout my journey and really rooting for me and, and giving me well wishes, giving me advice, uh, that was a big, big thing. Um, family means the world to me, as you can see. So having so many successful athletes in my family cheering me on and pushing me to be great, um, that definitely was for me. She's really good at this. Um, let's see, my family definitely starts off with my parents. Um, they sacrificed so much growing up for me. And I played soccer, so every single weekend we were traveling doing something. I, I was born in Scotland. And we used to have a thick Scottish accent growing up. And so that's where my love for soccer started. 
And so they, you know, they sacrificed a lot. Um, my mom didn't know how to drive growing up. And because in Scotland, you just kind of walk everywhere or ride bikes. So we used to walk um, in the Florida heat, which got over 100 degrees. We walked three miles to practice uh, every other day and back. So uh, she definitely sacrificed a lot for me. And um, I have four brothers and a sister. And so growing up, I was the youngest. So my brothers always pushed me to, to be better because they were always beating me and everything. So my brother would uh, have me go out in the yard and he'd be like, hey, dribble the soccer ball. And then he'd come out of nowhere and just slide tackle me and take me down. And so, but you know, that taught me to be tough. And with my dad, he was in the Navy for 30 years and, and uh, three of my brothers were U.S. Marines. So uh, thank you. So that, uh, that helped. You know, with how disciplined they were in their careers and being in the military, that helped me um, be disciplined as well. So, uh, yeah, I'd say I don't think there's one person in my family that didn't help me feel great this time. Okay, um, what advice would you give to the student ambassadors and even like the parents program advisors who are here today? Um, I'll start by addressing the parents and program advisors because I grew up um, having very influential people like yourselves in my life and that was how I got the success I got. Um, we're ki the kids are here so I think that they really need you and they really listen to the things you say and the things you tell them to do and just um, continue to give them that love and support and it will take them very, very far, I guarantee it. I'm proof of it. I come from a city and, and a neighborhood where we're not even supposed to make it out. So to be on the stage, to be as decorated as I am and to have the success, um, I really attribute that to my parents and to my support system I received from coaches, teachers, everyone who kind of had that influential career or influence in my life. Um, as far as my advice for the kids in here, Whatever you feel in your heart, whatever your goals are that you set for yourself, really believe them and really go forward with them. A lot of times people will tell you no or tell you not to do something because of their own insecurities, because of their own fears. And so that can take away from what you have for yourself and what you believe in. So I think that if you want it for yourself, go for it full force. It may sound crazy, like going for bobsled, um, but it ends up paying off and you'll show them in the end. So keep going for it. Um, I would say just dream big, you know, uh, when I was a kid, I always wanted to be a, a professional soccer player and, um, you know, I'm a pro football player now, which I never would have thought of growing up, but uh, dream big and I think you got to be encouraging to others around you. If somebody has an idea that they want to go after, you know, be encouraging to them. Um, you never want to be somebody that's tearing somebody down. You always want to be building somebody up. So. If you have that crazy idea, go after it. You know, uh, work with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul towards that. And um, you know, wake up every day with with a uh, with a mindset of you want to get better or you want to go after something. And. Um My freshman year of high school, and I'd never kicked a football in my life besides, you know, somebody tossing it to me, and I just tried to kick it as far away as possible because I never wanted to play football. Um, the main reason I didn't want to play football, I tell everybody this, was because of the, the really tight pants that the football players were wearing. And, it was, yeah, it wasn't my style. You know, growing up playing soccer, I had really loose soccer shorts, and I always looked at these guys on TV like, look at those guys wearing those tight pants, and it just didn't make any sense to me. Um, but luckily for me, my legs were so small that when I started playing football, they weren't tight on me anyways. But um, yeah, going out my freshman year for soccer, they didn't have a kicker, and they didn't have a soccer program in the summer. So uh, you know, I decided to kick footballs, and 
and uh, found out day one, apparently I could kick it far, and I mean, I had no idea. It was like a 45 or 50 yard field goal um, as a freshman, but I stuck with it and uh, just tried to get better at it ever since. Can you do, still do a Scottish accent? Thank you, I asked that. <laughs> that. Somebody plant that question. Let's see. Um, what do you want me to say? I'm having a great time today at this event. Um, <laughs> it's really awesome. I appreciate you guys having me here. <laughs>
But um, yeah, so JJK, uh, we used to run at the Jackie Joyner Kersey Relay meets in East St. Louis every year. And so one of the best parts about that was um, why, was speaking with all these like amazing Olympians and Jackie Joyner Kersey, and they would always do a crazy panel just like this. And it was so inspiring. And then we would go out there and race and compete the next day. So. Jackie Jordan Kersey was definitely one of my favorites, but I always want to be a, a, an Olympian and an Olympic medal uh, medalist, but I thought it was gonna be in track and field. It wasn't until uh, 2010, when I was a senior in college, and my coach at the time told me about the sport of bobsled, and I feel like most of the kids in here won't get my little cool runnings joke, but like when he told me that, that's all I thought about. I was like, okay, yeah, cool runnings, duh. But um, I didn't know it was so many amazing athletes like Vanetta Flowers and Herschel Walker who did other sports and came into the sport of bobsled and had, uh, had much success. So um, about a year and a half later, I went out and tried out for the sport and ended up re being really good. And um, in two years, I won my first Olympic medal. So it was crazy turnaround. So this is to both of the athletes. So what is your favorite part of being an athlete? Honestly, my favorite part of being an athlete is being able to sit here with people like you guys, um, being able to share my story, especially being from like the south side of Chicago and lower income areas. Like I need for you guys to know that it's possible for you to do whatever you want to do. I'm living proof, he's living proof. and. Um, the fact that I'm able to sit up here and share my story is the best part. Um, being able to connect with you guys, being able to connect with kids and people all across the world um, is the most fulfilling part of being an athlete. Um, the best part of being an athlete for me, I remember uh, growing up, you know, I always looked up to the athletes and um, Emmett Smith was from my hometown and Derek Brooks, there was, uh, we had some Olympians, some sprinters from my hometown. And so I always looked up to them and I thought, you know what, if I can make it, I always thought positive. So I was like, when I make it one day, I'm gonna try to make a difference. You know, whenever I get these opportunities, I'm gonna try to make the most of them. And so I think that is the best part, like you were saying, is getting to do things like this and be able to, we have a Levine Children's Hospital in Charlotte and being a part of the Panthers, they do a lot with the Children's Hospital. So we get to go there all the time, um, especially at, during the holidays and Christmas. And it's, it's really, really neat to get to, you know, to be able to make a, excuse me, a positive impact in, the, in those kids that are going through so much and getting to do those things. And, um, you know, being part of a, such an amazing organization that, that does so much in, in the community and, and for our surrounding community in Charlotte, it's, it's really special. What do you guys do outside of your career? What do we do outside of our career? Um,
good. Y'all have some good questions. Right. Um, let me see. I guess I say dedicated, um, unfinished, and goofy. <laughs> I, I don't know. In three, in three words, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs> we have time for two more questions. Next question is actually right here. Uh, if you had any hidden talents that no one knows about, could you show us? I think we heard a Scottish accent. So. Yeah, that could be my hidden talent. Um, I just kick a ball and I try to keep it real far. I don't know if I have any other hidden talents. <laughs> I can't even kick a ball far, so hey. Um, I really don't have any hidden talents. I told you about my weird obsession with Bigfoot, so I'm embarrassed already. Um, if I can think of anything else, it was when my niece was a little baby, I used to make this weird voice for her, and so I guess I could do that for you guys and embarrass myself further. Um, so. Next question will be the last question. Um, what surprised you most when you became a professional athlete? Or what were you not expecting to happen? Um, that's a really good question. I don't know where, who asked that? Oh, hey, that was a great question. Um, one of the things that surprised me the most through my Olympic journey and when I became a pro professional athlete was um, the way that I became a representation for things other than just being a bobsledder, other than just being an athlete. Um, I always grew up as this very determined person. Anything I went for, like I was going in and I was very competitive. But through my journey with bobsled, I didn't realize I stood for a little more than that. I was an African-American woman pursuing all these goals. I was a girl from the city of Chicago, from the south side, going out here and doing all these things. And so um, it wasn't until I started my bobsled journey and made it on that Olympic platform that I started connecting with more and more people from across the country, from my city. And they were telling me how much my story uh, inspired them and so I started to realize that it wasn't just about a medal it wasn't just about pursuing this one goal of having this around my neck uh, the journey that came with it and the people I inspired and the people that empowered me along the way uh, that was the best part um, I forgot the question <laughs> what was it one more time Okay, now I remember. Uh, what surprised me the most? I had to be honest. I wasn't just going to ramble up here not knowing the question. Um, what surprised me the most about uh, being a professional athlete, I think was the, the uh, vision when I first started off on this goal was that it was going to be, you know, like I'm going to go here, I'm going to go to, you know, from high school to college, I'm going to go to pros, going to win Super Bowls, and it's not like that. So it's, it's a very, um, I mean, maybe for some people, but... For me, it's been a, it's been a difficult journey. Um, going from high school to college, I thought I was gonna be a kicker and I showed up at Florida State and I was a punter and ended up kicking field goals one year in college. Um, two weeks before my senior season, I tore my knee and went from thinking I was gonna make it to the NFL to I might not play this year, um, to having my best year in college. And then um, from there going undrafted to uh, playing with the Ravens, getting cut, going to a, a league that's not even around anymore, and having like 10 people in the stands was, uh, was pretty crazy. And then going to the, the Redskins to where I'm at now, um, it's been an interesting journey, but looking back, I wouldn't have had it any other way. It's, it's been neat, the, the people I've gotten to meet, and um, you know, I feel like you, uh, you learn things you know, whenever you go through hard times, and going through hard times, you're able to help others out. So it's, it's been pretty neat, it's been a, it's been a fun journey. Um, Probably not fun a lot of times in the moment when you're going through things like that, but looking back at it, it's, it's definitely well worth it. Um, yeah. Okay, we have a surprise for our Fuel Greatness panel. All right, um, I'm really encouraging a lot of pitchers, and make sure you guys post this on your social media accounts, hashtag FUTP60 Summit, get them in there. Yeah.